highlights from last night. Grizzlies and Pelicans and John ja Morant loses the defender. Nice behind the back move. Makes the layup there. Ja is going to win Rookie of the Year. Oh. He is one of the most exciting players in the league. I'd like, it'd be nice if Memphis got good. They could get a few more games on TV so people could see him. Blazers and Warriors and Dame Lillard hitting a nasty step back three. Danny, Dame had 61 last night. <laughs> 61 last night in the overtime win. When's the single coming out about it? That's what I want to oh. know. <laughs> he's got some bars, man. He, he's Don't one it. of the best athlete Absolutely. rappers ever. Yep. Lakers and Celtics, but really just Celtics. Marcus Smart making the behind-the-back pass to Enos Kanter for the easy layup. Look at Marcus Smart, fresh off a game where he hit 11 threes, a Celtics record. Now a little behind-the-back dime to friend of the show, Enos Kanter, in a game the Lakers were slept through. Tough Terrible night. performance Tough night for, them. for them. That game, to me, was more about the Celtics and that what they could possibly be at their best, more so than a worry about the Lakers. All right, more from this one. Jalen Brown driving, rises over LeBron, finishes with the big slam. In part because of what he did his first game after missing a couple back to the vet. You know, this is pretty impressive right here. Uh, listen, Jalen Brown, fresh off that big contract, is playing very well this year. And to answer your question, Danny, we know exactly what the Celtics can be, the exact place they've been the last <laughs> decade, a plucky overachiever that gets their fans excited I only to know. lose Watch in out. the conference finals at best. Uh, listen, I'm rooting for the Celtics to make the don't NBA think finals. They, I, I, but I'm with you. I think that the it would be so much fun for LeBron to be able to sweep him out of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Mount St. Mary's taking oh. on St. Francis. Nana Apoku posterizing the defender with that big dunk right there. Look at that. Mount St. Mary's. Get up, young fella. Oh, he's oh. way outside. Oh. And yeah. that guy, look at him. He's so embarrassed he tried to take that charge. He tried to, <laughs> he fell sideways. Watch him. Watch him. He tried to take this charge, and then he's like, let me just get out yeah. of here. I shouldn't have done that. I that goes against that. the laws of physics right there. Uh, on to the 49ers now. They're in the Super Bowl for a number of reasons. A stingy defense, a stellar rushing attack, great coaching. What they haven't had to rely too much on is their quarterback in Jimmy G. Jimmy Garoppolo completed just six of eight passes for 77 yards in the NFC Championship game. That is tied for the second fewest passes thrown in a playoff game all time. Danny, how much do the Niners actually need from Jimmy G if they want to beat the Chiefs? They don't need a lot. They really don't. And this is the advantage of having a Kyle Shanahan system who has the perfect quarterback for that system. And he has um, engineered a system that doesn't have your quarterback have to make the type of plays that a Patrick Mahomes is going to have to make. Garoppolo has only gone over 300 yards passing one time, two, uh, or excuse me, three times. Two of which came against the Arizona Cardinals. Like those are the, and then the other one came in the shootout against the Saints, which was his I, best game as a pro. Clearly, he was exceptional. And the most impressive aspect of that to game to me was not the over 400 yards passing. It was the fourth quarter drive when they were behind and he needed to put the team on his back. And he showcased to me a poise and a composure that said I, the the moment is not too big for me. And that is important for a quarterback to have, especially here. Now this clearly is going to be a different stage. He's going to have to be efficient on third downs and in the red zone and then here's where they're going to need him to be a difference maker one or two plays in the super bowl for the 49ers to win garoppolo is going to have to do something off the script where you maybe it's by a split second a little bit of extra time maybe it's um, getting out in a scramble, you recognize man coverage and you get that extra 15 yards. Maybe it's a play like John Elway had in the Super Bowl where he's the helicopter, yep. right? And he was not a runner, but that was a difference-making play. You're, gonna, you're not going to need many. Just one or two from Garoppolo, an efficient game, that's all they need from him. So I, the, I understand what you're saying, and I think that is what the Niners hope for. Right. I, think, I think the, the Niners don't think they can win the Super Bowl with him throwing eight passes, but they certainly hope he doesn't have to throw 38 passes. They hope that this is a... 18 of 25 game for Jimmy Garoppolo where he makes a couple big plays like that They would sign up for that immediately Especially if those couple big plays are for his team as opposed to going the other way for the Kansas City Chiefs The last quarter century of Super Bowls though tells us when you have this big of a quarterback mismatch You need that quarterback to step up majorly if you're gonna win I, w I went through it before the show 
Because I think everyone would agree, Mahomes versus Garoppolo is the biggest mismatch on the field this week. I know they won't be on the field at the same time. Mm -hmm. Steve Young versus Stan Humphreys, team of the better quarterback one. Troy Aikman against Neil O'Donnell, better quarterback. John Elway against Chris Chandler. Tom Brady against uh, Jake Delhomme. Remember that Super yep. Bowl back in 03? Peyton Manning against Rex Grossman. The only time in the last quarter century we've had this type of quarterback mismatch, and the inferior quarterback one was Nick Foles over Tom Brady. And that was when Nick Foles was coming off the best game of his season in the NFC Championship game, 353 touchdowns, a 140 rating, and then maybe trumped that in the Super Bowl, throwing for 370 and three touchdowns and being a part of the Philly special, doing all of that. I There isn't a lot of precedent for the Niners saying we are going to try to just have our quarterback be a be a supporting character and them being able to win. There's a lot of precedent for teams going into the Super Bowl saying that's our plan. I know that was the Rex Grossman Bears plan. Let's have it be a special teams game, a defense game, mm -hmm. all these things. But they didn't do enough to win those games. And so I, I think for the Niners to beat the Chiefs, they don't need Garoppolo to outplay Patrick Mahomes, but they need Garoppolo to play far better than we've seen him play in this postseason, obviously. And they need him to at least give them a B-plus level performance because I don't think, I think, I didn't think the Titans could hold the Chiefs under 35. I don't think the Niners can hold them under 28. So how do you get around 30 points for San Francisco? If the Chiefs aren't turning the ball over a bunch like Green Bay, then you're going to have to do more through the air than they were able to do in the conference championship game. Agree. I hear your point, but there have been other quarterbacks who have been the, quote, game manager role and won Super Bowls, but you're saying the quarterback disparity in those games. When Trent Dilfer wins with the Ravens, it's Kerry Collins right. versus De and it, so it's a, so there wasn't Kerry Collins MVP type player on the other side exactly of the ball. Exactly right. Brad right. Johnson, Rich Gannon. I know right. Rich Gannon had played well, but, but he, he was in the MVP conversation. Sure. Rich and Gannon he had won. won one once yes. in his career, but yes. I still think people didn't look at it as such a massive disparity as we're seeing right, right and now. this one clearly is that um i would say i would say you could bump up what was your what would you say 15 of 28 i said 18 18 Eight, of 25 18 of 25 i think you could bump that up a little bit i don't think they would be opposed to 35 oh. attempts i just don't think you can get more than 35 out of him because and but he did do it with drew Brees. And in, in the Superdome, which was pretty impressive, but that's not the type of game you could rely on. But I do think it should be at least a little bit comforting if you're a 49ers fan saying, at least we did that once. But I don't think you can get in the shootout and hope to, your, your chances of winning would dramatically be reduced the more times Garoppolo has to throw the football. Well, the Packers aren't the Chiefs, but Kyle Shanahan showed that he's not afraid to just keep running the ball. And do you think that could possibly be the game plan moving forward? Where he doesn't not need to rely on Jimmy Garoppolo? Well, I think it's a very, I don't want to say easy, but I, I think it's easier to continue running the football, A, when you're gashing the other team right. for seven yards of carry, but B, when the other team has multiple first-half turnovers and you're playing from ahead. I think you saw the Titans, yes. who had a, a running back that was on as good of an eight-game run as we've ever seen in this league, get scared out of running the football the moment the Chiefs took the lead. Chiefs didn't have to go up by double digits. They went up by four, and they scared the Titans out of their game plan because they were, they, I know in the back of their head, they were like, man, Chiefs are going to keep scoring. They're yep. going to keep scoring. Now, of course, this game changes if Nicky Bosa comes around, strip sacks Mahomes, and they, they jump out and play their style of game. Mahomes never had a playoff turnover. The Super Bowl would be one hell of a time for that streak to end. And so that's the question. Whose terms is this game going to be played on? Right, and clearly the 49ers are going to want to dictate those terms early and often. But I thought one of the most underrated aspects of the game was Andy Reid, when they had the lead, was like, all right, you guys want to slow play this game? We'll slow play it, and we'll start running the football. I mean, they had an unprecedented stretch there where they were running it four or five, yeah, six I times in a it. row. I yeah, you it. did, but it was actually really smart because I think the Titans started to press a little bit, said, man, that clock is running. We have to start getting more aggressive because the time is running out on us. I thought that was a brilliant aspect. And plus, they were rushing three and dropping eight, so it was like, hey, we're daring you to run, and they did. All right, got to take a break. The only storyline running parallel to the Super Bowl right now, what is Tom Brady going to do coming up? Do the Patriots actually need Tom Brady more than he needs them? That's next on First Thing. And we got to talk about the Lakers getting their butts